Okay, everybody, CES 2023 is never complete until you come out here to the West Hall where all the cars and the lights shine bright. We're in the vehicle tech and advanced mobility section of the show. We got big brands, we got medium sized brands, cars, boats. Maybe we see some flying things as well. Hey, we're gonna check it all out. All right, now, when you're here at CES, there are booths that draw your eye and grab your attention, and Mercedes-Benz has one of the finest booths. I mean, right when I was out there, I like got sucked in. I'm here with Klaus, and behind me, this is, is this the EQXX? It's uh, called the EQXX. It's more than a show car. It's, uh, it's like a technology program of Mercedes for efficiency. So it's uh, the most efficient Mercedes we ever built. It's a pure electric driven car. Uh, it's very compact, it's very efficient. And that was the reason for this technology program, what's, what's possible. You've learned so much from just the, the EQS yeah. models. Can you talk about maybe some of the other tech features, interior things that you're doing to kind of also make new advancements here? Yeah. So let, let, let's start with the aerodynamic yes. because it's very important. When you look at the front of the car, this here, the diffuser, uh, that's very important for the aerodynamic. Also a little, little details. You normally you have very uh, great turbulences uh, at, at the wheel. Also very small um, mirrors. Yeah, right here. I mean, these look incredibly small. It's one of the smallest that I've seen in a long time. And what, what you also see is, uh, is uh, like boat tailing. Normally you have a very wide stand at the, at the rear wheels and uh, with this uh, shape it, it looks like a very sporty car but you have uh, also boat, boat tailing at the rear and here are the... the, the I love the bumper the, like the LEDs, lights, right? The lights integrated in uh, this, uh, this car. A diffuser coming out, so it's a foldable diffuser and you see also the, the solar panels on the roof. So the, the roof, the glass is also integrated with these solar panels within those, right? Yes, yes. You know, I have a question, like, this is obviously a statement car, right? Um, but this, this is a statement of how Mercedes-Benz is moving towards the future. What do you think, what do you think this car kind of represents for you as a company moving forward? Um, the car is very important for us because we had a new kind of collaboration between several departments worldwide. This car is, is a prototype. Uh, this car will not come in the market in the future, but the ideas of the car, the technologies of the car, solar, like the solar roof aspect, especially right, the solar right, that, that seems like one of those things that can instantly be put, integrated into your car line, right? Bring the ideas into serious products. All right. Well, class is amazing, and thank you so much for your time. Right. Thanks for being here. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You know we had to show you the biggest and baddest things here at CES 2023. I'm here with my big boy, Bill, but Bill, this thing's even bigger. Oh, what are we looking at? I mean, everyone can't get their eyes off of this. Yeah, I appreciate that, Brian. That's why they put me by the truck, so it makes me look <laughs> you know, nice, small. But uh, yeah, 777 is our truck. It's a 100-ton truck. 100 tons. And uh, it's it's about mid-size for us. We actually go up to 400 tons. This is a great size truck that's utilized in the quarry market and the smaller mine sites. Uh, and then we go up to, like I said, 400, ton, 400 ton trucks. I like how you say that as a matter of fact. Like, this is 100 tons. So we can put about 100 tons worth of material in the truck. That's what it'll carry. That's that's insane. Now, we also know, right, you're here at CES, so you're showcasing some of your tech. Uh, can you talk about, we saw that there's a lot of sensors, cameras in here. Uh, what, what are some of the technologies that are packed in this guy? We're fully autonomous with these things. We've been we've been running autonomous trucks now for quite some time in the mining industry. Um, the, you know, billions of tons of materials that have been moved. So, you know, when you look at the front of the machine, you know, you've got your, your LIDARs and your radar systems that are in there. Um, but then you just, you know, it's, it's not only what's on the machine with the hard hardware and so on and, and the, uh, the computer and the technology, but it's also the software and the offboard systems that allow us to run the entire mine site uh, with these trucks. So again, fully autonomous, um, which I know we're going to talk about the remote operating stations in a minute. That's, you know, that's not fully autonomous, which the trucks are. Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit about the difference. I mean, I look at this thing and it, it just the size and scale, I fit in the wheel well of this thing. <laughs> now you, he doesn't fit in the wheel well. No, no. I fit in the wheel well. Uh, this is obviously for industry. What's roughly the price of something like this? Let's just go in the millions. Why don't we just say that? Millions. That's, that's impressive. This is the triple seven. That's the triple seven. All right. Th this is amazing. I can't wait to just like kind of walk around and play on it. Now we also have, you have demos here of remote dozing and remote excavation. Um, Correct. Can you tell us about, you know, what's going on there? So what we have here, we have our remote operator station. So one on the, on the left is we're running a dozer that's situated in Tucson, Arizona. Right now. Right now. Okay. So almost, you know, 450 miles away, she's operating a dozer live. Okay. 
And then the, the one on the right, the operator station, is running an excavator that's sitting in, basically outside Peoria, Illinois, and it's about 1,700 miles away. Oh my okay? God. So right now, they're in remote control, right? Whatever they're doing is a one-to-one -one relationship operating it, okay? We talked about the truck being fully autonomous. No operators. No one's touching that. Right. But we have then something in between where we have what semi-autonomous dozers, where one operator can operate up to three to five dozers at one time in certain applications. Wow, wow, that, 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 that's, I mean, that's a lot of efficiency there too, right? Which is less, I mean, less manpower, person power to be able to control these things in different locations. It, it is, but it also does, I mean, when you look at it, look at the operator environment. You know, that operator right now is not in a harsh environment, mm. right? She's not beating herself up with the tractor bouncing around, right? She's in a great environment and she can operate this at, at any time. Now, this equipment has the ability where she could stop operating this one and flip on another one. Mm. And so, you know, she could operate up to 15 different dozers, not at the same time, but just, and never, never leave the seat, right? And when she's ready to go home, she just turns the machine off and goes out to her car and goes home. Okay, I see you smiling when you talk a lot about this, so it's yeah. obviously exciting for you. What, what excites you the most about kind of being here and showing all this stuff off here at CES? So a few things, yeah. right? I mean, first of all, CES is, is really cool, right? But all this advancement, all this technology, everything that you see here, you know, if you get a chance to go up in the truck bed, we're gonna show you that you couldn't have any of this without the minerals and the minerals that are mined, okay? So Caterpillar is providing the leading edge technologies to help miners do sustainable mining and get these materials out so that then we can have all these other great advancements here that we can all take advantage of in our daily lives, right? So we're excited to be at CES, not only to show you that, but to get people, you know, show you that being a leading technology company, attracting talent and continuing to bring talent to our company to keep building this technology. That's yeah, incredible. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it, my man. Hey, it's all been right, a pleasure to meet you. All right, have Thank a great you so show. much. Yeah. All right. Sure. Cheers. Another booth that you cannot take your eyes off of, it has to be John Deere. I mean, look here behind me, I'm doing, joined with Lane here from John Deere, and Lane, what are we actually looking at back over there? Yeah, so what we're looking at is one of our sprayers, state-of-the-art sprayer, we just announced a CN Spray Ultimate here. This is a, a, basically think of it as a spraying robot that has camera and machine learning. It sees the weed and it only sprays where the weed is, okay? It doesn't spray anywhere else. So it's, customers are seeing tons of savings with this technology. So that's just, the, if you're a weed, you do not want to see that guy. That's that, right. that's, that's a scary big weed killer. That, all right, all right. Now, I know that John Deere announced kind of two things here. Um, one of them is like a planting technology. I was hoping you could talk about that. We did, actually. We're actually in the right, a good spot to talk about this, right? Because this would be a picture of what the soil would look like. And, and and this, when you're planting, you're planting in a lot of debris and residue. It's it's not pretty, right? And you've got to we've got to put seed there, so you can see we have corn seed in here. And then today, what we announced is Exact Shot technology, where we're actually only putting fertilizer where this seed is in order to help that plant really get growing in a hurry, right? So it's called starter fertilizer. Farmers do it today, but they spray a lot of fertilizer. It's wasteful. It costs a lot of money. By them doing this exactly where the seed is, we're sure that seed gets a good start. That's wow. why. So what you're looking at overall is a planting unit, and we're spraying, we're, we're showing seed coming out of that planting unit. That's at 10 miles an hour, <laughs> okay? And then what happens is today, you're just, you know, you, if you were doing this today, you would just have a continuous stream. So that's what would be happening, but now. But now with exact shot, we're only spraying where the seed is. Right, so super powerful technology. Um, it goes on our existing technology today, which is called Exact Emerge Planters. Um, and we put this piece in there to put starter fertilizer on there. So that, that's a physical hardware piece and software that has now been added to an existing hardware piece that allows your current farmers to take advantage of this. That's exactly oh, right. Wow. So you take your existing technology, we add something else on top of it. Super powerful. Awesome. Yeah. Lots of savings for them. Good for the environment, of course, because we're only putting fertilizer where we need to. Um, so that minimizes runoff and other kind of issues you get with fertilizer.
All right, so um, I saw this. I, I'm guessing this is some kind of simulation with with the sprayer. Yeah. So it's hard to explain, really, in an environment like this, how fast this is working and how fast our camera vision and machine learning algorithms are actually taking off. Right. So this is a 12. This is a truly a 12 miles an hour, which is what this machine would run at, finding a weed with the camera, the ML working, and actually the nozzle spraying the weed. And so those red marks you see are in identifying the weed and spraying it. This is going at 12 miles per hour. I mean, this is fast. It is fast. Like, I, even if you were a human trying to throw a dart at this, you would miss every time. Really good, really good point. You you can't do this. Uh, you you can't do this with your eye. It's happening too fast. Which is part of our whole, uh, really our whole uh, attempt here is how do we make these machines superhuman, right? How do we make them do more than we could actually do? Okay, so it looks like I'm looking at a John Deere charging station, but what is this guy really supposed to be charging? Well, so the, so this this is this is a charging station. It's something that we would deploy like at a construction site mm. because we will have electric machines working on that construction site. And so behind you is actually a, an excavator that is uses batteries to run, right? And so what are the advantages of having a battery powered um, excavator? There's a couple of big ones I'll talk about. Number one. One, um, from an energy and, uh, efficiency point of view or whatever, we do an, a great job in terms of using the battery to, to, uh, for the environment and savings. The second big one, though, really is if we operate this in a city environment, it's super quiet. Mm. And so you can run these machines at longer hours because it's quieter in a residential or an urban environment. And so it also uh, gives it, gives a, the person who bought this an opportunity to, to do more work. And this excavator was announced here at the show, is that Correct? We did. So we announced this today. This is only the beginning. We have a joint venture on the battery side with a company called Chrysal, uh, which is which is, makes modular batteries packs that we're that we're using that we can deploy across many of our machines. So. And for someone like you uh, who's been working with John Deere for seven years, um, how have you seen things even change in that short time, just from a technology standpoint? Oh, it's been it's been fabulous. What's happened is as Deere has embraced this technology mostly because our customers see the value. And so Deere is highly motivated by our customers. And when our customers say, hey, we like this and we want more of it, we double down and say, okay, how do we get more of this, right? And so that's really the, the, the culture within Deere is being driven by our customers saying, we want more autonomy, we want more autonomous, uh, we want more electric in some cases, right? We need more precision in how we collect data. All those things are important. All right, thanks, Lane, appreciate it. You bet, All right. thank you. Right on. Yep. Now, when we talk about mobility and technology, yeah, we've been on the road, but let's just go from the land to the sea here with the CEO of Brunswick, David Fouts. Uh, David, thank you so much for your time. Really you are very welcome. It. It's a pleasure. So we're here in your awesome booth and you're showing off a lot of technologies that you as Brunswick um, are showcasing here at CES. So I'd love to kind of hear what you're doing here at the show. Well, a, a lot, really. <laughs> we have a, a technological innovation strategy that we call ACES. It stands for Autonomous, Connected, Electrified, and Shared. Mm. And those are themes that you'll hear a lot of, in a lot of verticals, including automotive and aviation, and even you know, mining and agriculture. But there's a particular application that we're uh, pursuing in marine. And really everything in the, in the stand you see here in the exhibit reflects some aspect of our ACES strategy. Right over here, um, we start with an autonomy simulation. So if you think about autonomy in the marine environment, it's really it's somewhat different to the automotive environment. If you think about um, autonomy in automotive, it's really about kind of detaching the driver from the driving experience. But in the marine environment, you, it's part of the experience. You want them to be able to operate the boat. What you'd like to do is assist them in stressful maneuvers like docking or oh, yeah. obstacle avoidance or the things where, you know, that, that people get concerned about. So we've developed um, a lot of systems that help um, captains to operate their boat more intuitively. And now we're taking it to the next level with autonomous docking and obstacle avoidance. So, you know, not just a hardware company with motors, but software. And we're starting, you know, yeah. now you're talking about merging software and hardware together. You really it's are, like, yeah. you know, I'm not saying, I don't want to say uh, the iPhone of boats, but when you control those aspects, That's you can really do a lot of amazing things. You hardware really software can. You know, our products, like just like you say, are partly a physical product now and partly a digital product. There's so much content. 
It can be charting, cartography, those kind of things, or a lot of layers of apps. All of our products are connected right now. Um, so you're exactly right. We've become just as much a software and content company as we are a physical um, technology company. You've got the ecosystem, right? You do you have, have the your ecosystem. ecosystem. That's exactly right. Now, yeah. when we talk about the ecosystem, I look at something like this, this beautiful Sea Ray. Um, what is this boat that we're looking at? And maybe talk about some of the tech and some of the Brunswick stuff that's in here. So this is a Sea Ray uh, 370 Sundancer outboard. And it's a 37 foot boat designed primarily for cruising. So it's a beautiful looking boat. I think you know anyone would, would agree. It has a couple of cabins in there, so you can easily overnight or go away for some time. There's bow seating, so you can enjoy it. You know when the boat's underway, sitting up front, and then this really nice and sophisticated cabin up top. It's powered by two V12 engines, so total 1,200 horsepower to power the boat. So this will move the boat pretty fast, probably 50 miles an hour, which is very fast for a boat like this. A lot of great features on here for fuel economy though, like uh, the first outboard with an integrated automatic transmission. <laughs> okay. So that, you know, things that, that you haven't seen before in this world. Yeah. So very difficult to electrify something as powerful as this. But what we have done is electrify the power for all of the house systems on the boat. That means things like um, air conditioning, refrigeration, the infotainment systems. And we've introduced a big lithium ion battery pack there in a power management system that would replace an um, internal combustion engine generator on a typical boat, so in a more sustainable way, can power all of the subsystems except the propulsion system. Got it, got it. So there are you know, nice ways to introduce electrification in marine. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about electric propulsion in the smaller horsepower ranges, but for a big boat like this, there are still electrification options like powering all the house loads. Have you ever said out loud, I'm on a boat. <laughs> Have you ever? Just, I just want to know. Uh, I don't know. It's that... possible that okay. I uttered those words. Okay, yeah. okay. Just want to know. All right. So this is a high capacity lithium ion battery pack and a display that you'll see on the helm of that boat that supplies all of the information you need about the state of charge, what's being used on the boat in terms of electrical um, uh, supply. And then this V10 engine has very powerful alternators on it that power and recharge that system. So that's the Fathom system. Right? So, so th these no, work hand-in-hand like this. Is this battery actually in this um, C-Ray that, that we saw? Uh, yes, so yeah, a number of those batteries will be in there that form the energy storage system on the boat. And then around it will be both a wired and a wireless um, transmission system. So it's all connected system, yeah. It's amazing. And then over here, you see one of the products that we introduced um, just in the last couple of days. In fact, you see three of them. This is our uh, series of three um, Avatar outboards. Um, they're electric outboards of different um, power levels. The one on the left you see is the one that we introduced commercially just a few days ago. So it's an exciting product as you see it. Same kind of design aesthetic, design DNA as our conventional outboards, but this time with electrification. And a lot of cool features. Right inside there is a battery that I can probably accept. So right in there, there's a uh, lithium ion battery right inside there. It's easy to remove and, and install again. And then these are higher power versions of the same uh, series of engines. So um, we've designed it not just for operation, but also for portability. You can see you can, either, you can carry these batteries around, which is it's a very cool thing. You know, you've got to design it not just for the operation, but how do you get there? So I am just so delighted uh, to have been able to, for the team to have been able to accomplish all that in a relatively short period. Now there's a long run road, run, road ahead of us. So many more innovations in front of us, but I'm, I'm delighted with what the team's been able to achieve. All right, awesome. That was great, David. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so um, much. And yeah, buddy. if you want to show me that uh, docking system, yeah, I'll, we, we, we try that out sometime, yeah? <laughs> yeah, sure, we'll do that. So I got a bulldoze remotely out in Arizona. I almost got on a boat and that Mercedes EQXX, whoo -hoo, that thing was fire. I just feel like we just barely scratched the surface and that is what CES is all about, just exploring, finding things and there's a whole lot more to explore. So I'm just gonna keep on playing around here. We'll see you later here, but CES 2023, the place to be, whoo.